Hey, East Coast family, I want to welcome in right now the Vieira campus, the Parkway, the Chapel, and Coco. Can we put our hands together and welcome everybody right now? Come on. And let me just, let me just ask you guys a question. Are you thankful? Are you thankful that you serve a God that is so faithful to you that even when you fail, you can get right back up and keep going because it's not dependent on your faithfulness, but on his faithfulness? If you are, give the Lord some praise right now. I mean, seriously, worship him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for opening our hearts today, even right now. We are in a pray first series, a message series about praying first. We've got an app for you. Put the app up if you wouldn't mind. Get out your phone. Seriously, just get out your phone right now. Start the message clock. We got this. We're going to do it all right now. Get out your phone. Get this on your phone. I'm telling you right now, I just got a text from somebody two days ago that picked this app up, said, thank you so much, Matt, for getting this app to me. I was able to go through uh, the tabernacle prayer. Y'all know what the tabernacle prayer is? No? Well, get this app. You'll find out. And come be a part of this message series. We're going to be talking about things like this, different ways to pray, different ways to lean in and press in to God. We're talking about pray, prayer. And it's not just praying. It's pray first. First. Come on, say first. What are you all plugging into these days? Seriously, think about it. What are you plugging into? And what is it producing? You plugging into the news? What does that produce? Anybody want to rage out? You know what I'm saying? No wonder why people are raging out. Want to rage quit, you know, on the golf course. Just check my clubs in the lake. Sometimes when you're watching the news, it's like, man, what are we doing here? I just want to, I had this thought the other day. Can anyone relate to this? I just want to chuck my cell phone into the lake, get my family, get on a bus, and just go north. Like, anybody else? Well, the reason why is because we're plugging into the wrong sources. We got to pray First, we got to plug into that, that power. We got to plug into that source that will get us through and get us out of this works mentality. Because when you're watching the news, when you're plugging into social media, when you're plugging into those conversations with people at work, you're feeding off of this and you're thinking, man, if I could just, if I could just get in control, if I could just get the right information going here, if I could just figure out how to deal with this situation, if I could work through it, if I could learn my way through it, I'll be okay, but the fact of the matter is that you're never going to figure it all the way out. You're never going to know enough to figure out what's going on in the world around us. You're never going to be strong enough or perform well enough to get peace. You don't get peace from that. Can I get an amen today? You don't get peace from figuring it out. You don't get a peace from performing. You don't get peace from posting your beautiful content on social media. As good as it is, you don't get peace from that. Where do you get peace from? I get peace from the Lord. And prayer plugs us into that. Pray, pray first, pray first, pray first. Today we're going to look at God's promises, especially how to move from pain to promise. Pain to promise. First Chronicles 4, 9 through 10. This is a prayer in the Bible. And I'm going to read about it here with us. So turn there in your Bible. Look at the screen. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, but his mother named him Jabez because, excuse me, saying, because I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez really just literally means pain. Wow, what a name. Okay. Jabez cried out. Imagine that baby dedication. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, here's Jabez. His name means pain. We're going to pray for him today. You know, like, it's awkward, but that's what his name was. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel saying, Oh, that you would indeed bless me and enlarge my border, my property, and that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil so that it does not hurt me And God granted his request. We're going to learn about this prayer today. Would you pray with me as we study the word? Father, we just thank you so much for your blessing on our lives, God. Bless this message. Bless my words. Bless me today that I might share your word. God, increase the influence of prayer in our church into the world today. 
Lord, that your presence, your Holy Spirit is here right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for ministering in us and through us today. In Jesus' name we pray. If you agree with that prayer, just say amen. 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 So a great uh, poem here I want to read, read to you. It's just really more like a spoken word. But what makes fire burn is the space between the logs, a breathing space. Too much of a good thing, too many logs packed in too tight can douse the flames almost as surely as a pail of water would. So building fires requires attention to the spaces in between as much as to the wood. When we are able to build open spaces in the same way we have learned to pile on logs, then we could come to see how it is the fuel and the absence of the fuel together that makes fire possible. We only need to lay a log lightly from time to time. A fire grows simply because the space is there with openings in which the flame that knows just how it wants to burn can find its way. Prayer is that open space. Prayer is that open space. Prayer is when you stop working, when you stop thinking and figuring it out, when you stop adding another thing on your schedule, when you stop talking to the doctor and the other person that knows this, doctors are awesome, please talk to your doctor, but when you stop talking to the experts, when you stop getting the information off of Google or whatever you're dealing with, prayer is that open space for God to move in your life. How many of us just keep piling on the logs? Can I get a witness today? Do you like open space? All seven of you that raised your hand, can I get a witness today? Anybody else wake? Come on. You just keep piling it on. You, you go to work to stay busy so you don't have to think. You go do that fun thing so you don't have to think. You get on your phone so you don't have to think, so you don't have to have open space because you're not sure what's going to come out in that open space. Let me tell you, prayer is where that open space needs to be filling your heart and filling your mind as you give these things to God. You see, our society is obsessed with activity without margin. We're obsessed with it 24-7. 24-7. I didn't grow up that way. Many of you didn't grow up that way. Where we, we went and played outside. Anyone play outside? Yeah? But see, I still had a Nintendo when I was 11 years old. Like, but I still played outside. I still, play, I still rode a dirt bike without a helmet, okay? All right? We're all we're crazy, okay? When I was a little kid, I remember driving in, in my mom's van before like seatbelts were like, yeah, we should probably wear those up under the dashboard playing with the wires. Like she's just cruising along, no thought. We had open space. We, we weren't inundated. We weren't seatbelted to, to society and this never ending drip of information. Prayer is the way that we create space for God to move in us, to listen to him, to speak our business, to, to heal, to grow, to rest, to vent, to off gas. You know, when you pray, you could, you could actually tell God, I'm, I'm sick of it. I'm tired of it. Y'all like to vent? Anyone like to vent? See, sometimes we gossip because we're venting. You know, you can just tell that to the Lord if you make space for him, if you make space. See, prayer is the place where we can resolve. Did I say rest already? I did. We can rest where we can change, where we can get wisdom, connection, experience, and experience the love of the Father. That's where prayer is. Prayer is making space for God to move and lead in your life. You know, even, even especially Christ, the Christians I know, the circles that I run in, a lot of prayer for us, we learned a lot about our authority in Christ. So often when we pray, we fill it with words, don't we? We're just, come on, in the name of Jesus, I speak to the mountain, be thou removed, and be cast into the sea. I speak to the fig tree, be cursed. You know, we're just like, let's go, which is good. But sometimes you just need to make space for the Holy Spirit to move and have his way. Holy Spirit, would you come? 
Would you show yourself real? You know, the, the prayer movements that we see across America right now, where, where the church is praying, they're, they're seeking God. We, we saw a 16-day prayer movement in Asbury, that revival there, that was awesome. But let me just tell you, I, I made a mistake. That is not a revival. That is a prayer meeting so that revival will happen in our nation. Okay, this is what revival is when people get saved by the thousands and possibly by the millions. That's revival. And the prayer meetings are the precursor to God moving in power across our nation. It's the church seeking God. Can we get a little clap for that right there? Okay. <laughs> revival is kind of this buzzword and we're like, we don't even know what it means. We just know God's going to do something. But let me tell you about Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 4 when, when the when the church got together and they prayed and they gathered, powerful things happened. Thousands got saved. People got filled with the Spirit. People spoke in other tongues and they heard them in their own language. The walls shook. Tongues of fire came. Acts chapter 4, the same thing's happening. The Holy Spirit rushed through. But it wasn't so the church could have a prayer meeting. It was so the church could be powerful and move, could raise the dead, that blind eyes could open, that the sick would be healed, and ultimately people would be saved. That's what we're praying for. <laughs> Prayer is being elevated in our church. It's being elevated in our nation. And honestly, we didn't plan this. We're not like, let's do a prayer thing with Pastor Chris Hodges has got a prayer book going and a prayer app and, and there's prayer movements. We didn't do that. We just accidentally stumbled into this. Like, we're not that smart, but the Holy Spirit is. He led us to this. You see, just in, we had all this scheduled and we had no clue. We had over 300 people in two prayer meetings here at East Coast in the last week in our rooted small groups teaching people how to pray and experiencing prayer. I've been attending Pastors University, which is part of Bayside College, and uh, Brother Larry Stock still teaches, and he literally spent the first two straight days talking about prayer and fasting. We're talking 16 hours straight, learning about prayer and fasting. As I'm sitting there, um, he just kind of pops out this thing. He says, you know, this prayer track, like a track to follow, the Jabez prayer, that might be a good prayer if you want to move out of a season of pain into a season of, of promise and healing. I was like, that sounds kind of nice. Anybody else? Like, okay. And I just took a note of it. And I knew that word was for me. But uh, who hears from the Lord sometimes and doesn't act right away? You're like, let me, just, let me just make sure God wants me to do that, right? Anybody else here do that? I do. So uh, I thought, man, I, I might try this, Lord. I might try this, you know, like I get up the next morning and uh, I get my devotions out and I go through my personal devotions that, I, that I've been doing. I've been, been faithful with those. I've been journaling and been going strong for a long time. And then I open up East Coast, 21 Days of Seeking God, make space for him. I open that up. And wouldn't you, wouldn't you know what the scripture of the day was for that? It was the Jabez prayer. I literally audibly gasped, and I don't gasp. That's my wife's job. She gasps. Like, in the car, she's like, <gasps> I'm like, what? She's like, oh, something random. I'm like, oh, I thought we were dying, right? You know, like, no. <laughs> I gasped. I said, Lord, you were trying to get my attention. God, I'll do this. I will. I'm trying to get my attention. You know, the amazing thing about teaching on prayer, I want to preface this over all all that we teach on prayer. I've, had some, I've heard some amazing teachings on prayer. I mean, just powerful. But my favorite teaching on prayer is this. Pray the way you know how. Okay? Well, I don't know how to do that prayer. What kind of prayer do you know? Do that prayer, all right? Will you commit to just the simple act of bringing prayer into your life the way you know how? Step one. Will you do that? Are you with me? Okay. But I want to teach you the Jabez prayer. We're going to go through this quick. This is a two-part message. I'm giving you the preaching part. And then campus pastors in every location are going to come up and we're going to do a corporate prayer part together. All right? So I'm giving you the preaching part. All right? The Jabez prayer. See, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers because his mother named him Jabez, saying, because I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel. Dr. Bruce Wilkinson started praying this prayer in 1972. He heard it for the first time, graduating Bible college, praying the prayer of Jabez faithfully. In the year 19, 
excuse me, the year 2000, he got invited to Washington, D.C. for the National Prayer Day of Prayer. And he thought, well, maybe I'll write a little book or something, a little booklet to give out to help people understand this prayer that I've been praying. He thought maybe 20,000 people would get a hold of the book. He was excited about 20,000 people. He only had a few months to write the book. He wrote the book. He got the book out. Who remembers the prayer of Jabez book? Who has one on their shelf somewhere you haven't touched since 2001? Okay. Uh, Guilty as charged, okay? 28 years of faithfully praying. Year 2000, he goes to Washington, D.C. His book ends up selling 9 million copies. 28 years of faithfulness and praying and and sowing this into his life. God wants to get this to the nation. This random little prayer in the middle of the Old Testament, in the middle of one of the toughest books to read, uh, of Josephat begot hermeneutics. And you're like, what are you talking about? You're like, I don't even know what any of that means. This little prayer shows up. The first part of this prayer Jabez prays to the God of Israel. This is so significant. Do you know in the Bible, we hear about the God of Abraham, and you guys fill in the bank, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. I thought his name was changed to Israel. Why are we bringing up his old name, the deceiver? That's what his old name was, Jacob the deceiver. We're not saying the God of Abram, which is Abraham's old name. We're using God's faithful promise to Abraham of Abraham instead of Abram. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, sometimes when you read the Bible, you'll see the God of Jacob and the God of Israel in the same verse. And here's the truth. The God of Israel is what Jacob wrestled with God to move from the old deceiver full of pain and shame into the man of promise who would bring forth the 12 tribes of Israel and see the faithful nation of Israel be birthed across the world. Israel is the one that moved from pain to promise. Put pain to promise up there if it's not already up. Pain to promise. Jabez prayed to the God of the one who wrestled through his pain to the promise. The man of pain wrestled to the God who gets people from pain to promise. You could be that person. When you're in pain, when you're confused, when you're worrying, when you feel just weary, you feel like giving up and you're exhausted, you could start praying and leaning into this prayer to move forward. He prays to the God of Israel, oh, indeed, that you would bless me. Corey Ten Boom she, she's noted for being arrested for helping Jewish people escape Nazis. She said this, Praying is when you leave a world of not being able to do something and enter God's realm where everything is possible. Do you want your blessing or come on, do you want God's blessing in your life? The Bible says those who have not because they ask not. Ask and you will Receive, seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open to you. Are you asking for God's blessings daily? Jesus prayed it in the, in the Lord's Prayer. And give us our bread, our daily bread. God's blessing today. God's blessing. Pray God's blessing over your life. Number two, influence. See, it says, enlarge my border or my property. And, and this would have been the prominence and the success, when, when something grows in size, it grows in influence. The bigger the city, the more influence. Biggest cities in the world, New York, London, Paris, Tokyo, Rockledge, you know what I'm saying? We're just huge cities. Right? Come on, Rockledge. Rockledge, all right? Come on, someone from Rockledge, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, me too. Me too. All right. But Rockledge has no prominence in the world right now because it's not large enough. So you grow in size, you grow in influence. You pray for God's prominence and success. And do you know what I pray? I pray this. I say, God, if there's anything in me that you want to grow and bring out to the world, do that, Lord. If there's anything in me worth giving away, bring it to the city, bring it to the county, bring it to the state, Bring it to the country and bring it to the world. And then I I also pray that for you. You know, I I believe that God wants to fill our church with influential people. 
And I kind of think I'm actually already looking at him right now. You might have thought I was talking about somebody else. I'm talking about you. That the message that happens in here, it goes. It goes to your work. It goes to the county. Anybody here travel across the state? You're a sales, sales rep or anything like that? You're traveling for your job? Raise your hand. Come on, anybody. Yeah? Awesome. Anybody travel across the country? Yeah? Any, yeah? Come on. Anybody world traveler? Yeah? God wants to bring the message out. Number three, God's presence, that your hand would be with me. Every good and perfect thing comes from above. God's presence, the power of his Holy Spirit to breathe in supernatural gifts of healing, of discernment, prophecy, all these things we want, God's presence, he gives those out. And number four, that you would keep me from evil so it does not hurt me. And God granted his request. You know, some translations say this, so that God, you would keep me from evil so that I would not feel the pain of my enemy or that I would not cause pain to others. Jesus prayed it like this, and keep me from temptation, but deliver me from the evil one. What is prayer? We need prayer for our, our kids. We need prayer for our family. We need prayer for our friends. We need prayer for ourselves. We need prayer for our pastors. We need prayer for our church. You know, the funny thing about prayer is if I said, hey, would you, would you come up here? Boogie, would you come? No, I'm, I'm not asking you, but I know you would. Would you come up here and pray right now? What you would probably not do is this. Lord, I just pray that you would bless me a lot. Indeed, Lord. That you would increase my influence. That your hand would be upon me. And that you would keep me from evil. You probably wouldn't do that, would you? And most of you, if I said, hey, tell me a prayer request, a lot of you wouldn't say something about yourself. You'd say something about my, my son, my daughter, my, my so-and-so. You know, this prayer gets your attention on God changing your heart and your life. When you're in pain, you cut your arm open badly and you're bleeding. Have you ever thought, Lord, would you just bless my investment accounts so that I just get another percent like this month? Would you, do you do that? No, you go, stop the bleeding. Help, help, help. And that's what happens when you're in pain. You get focused on your wound. You get focused on your hurt. God wants to get, you, get your attention off of that temporary wound, that temporary season, and he wants to get it on the, the eyes of eternity that he wants to do something in you. So now we're going to have all our campus pastors come up at every location, all of our service directors, coordinators. Pastor Brian is going to come up, lead us in a prayer. Would you all just, why don't we all we want to stand or sit? Stay seated. Thank you. God bless you. This is a good word and it's a good challenge. We get to exercise it now. We get to spend some time. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to lead you in a time of prayer for you. You're going to start by talking to the Lord about blessing you. you remember, we're blessed to be a blessing. You're not, blessed, you're not asking God to bless you so you can have and you can just look at me, look like a blow up and glow up and all the things. It's not about that. It's about God's blessing on your life. Without God's blessing, we got nothing. So we're just going to take some time. The band's just going to play in the background. You just spend a moment, one minute. One minute, you and Jesus, right in your seat. Ask God to bless you, that you'd be a blessing. Go ahead. Right, that's one minute. Good work. Good work. Next, you're going to pray for influence. God, if there's anything good in me that you'd want to give away through me, you'd want to use me to influence a community in my workspace, in my school, in my neighborhood, anything good in me, God, would you expand the influence? Would you, would you use me to reach out, to look out? Spend one minute doing that. Pray of your influence would increase in Jesus' name.
All right, that was one minute. Good work. Next up, pray that his presence would go with you. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go if he's not there. If God's not with me, I'm not going. Sometimes I go and I wonder, God, was this you? Or am I out here on my own? Know that Emmanuel, God with you, wants to be with you. We celebrate it even in communion. What the blood of Jesus did was made a way for him to do it with you. Pray that the presence of God and the power of his presence would be on your life, would be in your influence, would be in your success. Better is one day in his courts than thousands elsewhere, amen? Spend a minute and pray that way. Your presence, God, with us. Nice job. The fourth is protect us. Prayer bread of Jabez said that you will keep me from evil so that it does not hurt me. You know, there's, we've prayed prayers of protection for your kids and for maybe for your parents or for your, your friends. Would you pray God's protection that he give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. That in your pathway is life, hope, Protect us from evil. There's a real enemy. Pray protection now over you and your influence, your success. Protect us from evil. All the force of the enemy, we win. In the name of Jesus from evil. Go ahead, take a minute and do that. All right, now I'm going to ask you to stand. And something powerful happens when we agree. We're going to pray these same four things. Don't take it, don't take it, don't take it. You're trying to steal my podium, my notes. Something powerful happens when we, when we agree. The Bible says when two of us would gather, we'd agree on anything in the earth to be done for us by our Father in heaven. So this is what we're going to do now. We're going to pray as a church. We're going to pray these same four areas over our church that we would that God would bless the church because where his blessing is, there's more than enough for every good work, amen? Would you do this? I'm gonna pray. Would you just agree with us of his blessing now over our church? Father, we're just thankful for your blessing on this house, a life-giving church that lasts. Your blessing, Lord, would you bless us? Would you bless this house? Would you bless this ministry? Would you bless us to be a blessing? God, we're thankful for your blessing that makes rich and adds no sorrow. We thank you for your blessing that's better than we could ask, think, or imagine. God, have your way. Bless us. Not for us to build us, but for us to build you and to make you famous. And your goodness would be on display. And that by your goodness, men and women would turn to you. In Jesus' name. Next, we're going influence. We're going to pray for influence, greater influence in our community and around the world from this house. This church, would you agree with me, church? Come on, Father, we're thankful for your influence. We thank you for open doors that no man can close. God, we thank you for opportunities that we don't even see, but by the Spirit you see. Show us divine appointments, divine connections, your influence through us on this house, this church, that your name would be made famous in all the earth. God, we pray over this city, Merritt Island, We thank you for influence in Merritt Island. We thank you for influence in Brevard County, in the state of Florida, in the United States of America, and to the ends of the earth. Your influence, your name made famous through this church in Jesus' name. We're going to pray for his presence. Father, we want your presence more than we want. 
We need your presence more than we need anything else. And we thank you that you're here with us now, that in your presence, the fullness of joy, God, I pray that joy would overflow, that hope would overflow, that by your spirit, signs and wonders would follow your preaching, our preaching of the word, God, that your presence would be rich, that we'd have encounters with you that would spill over, that would go so deep into our lives, it'd spill out into Monday and Tuesday and Thursday and Wednesday and Friday and Saturday and every day. Every day, your presence, we need it. We're hungry. And you say, if we will hunger and thirst for righteousness, we'll be filled. We think we're filling us up with your presence in Jesus' name. And lastly, for protection. Father, we thank you for protection over this house, over this ministry, over the work of your hand here at East Coast. We say, evil one, stay far from us. Be bound in Jesus' name. We thank you for life and hope and the spirit of life and liberty being loosed. The death and destruction and chaos and strife would have no place in this house. In Jesus' name, God, we thank you for just your angels that have been given charge over us, that are here and amongst us, even now, God. We thank you that in our pathway is life. Come on, we're going we're gonna to have new hope. We're going to have new wine, one voice together. We're going to worship. We're going to honor you because we're a house protected of influence and success and protection. We bless your name today, Jesus. Come on, let's worship, church. Let's worship together a little more.
Come on, where would we be without the love of Christ? Honestly, I know I would be nowhere. Um, there, We talked a lot today about ways to connect with God, ways to talk to God, ways to approach God. Um, but the reality is that if you have not hidden your life in Christ, if you have not given your life over to Him, you can't approach His throne. Um, Jesus is the one who made a way for us to come boldly into the presence of God. And I just want to invite you into that. If you know that you have never um, said yes to Jesus and turned away from your own way and started following Him, that is the very first step to being able to have a life of prayer, um, to be able to connect with God. The Word says that we, because of Jesus, we can come boldly into th the throne room of God to ask for what we need. It's full of grace and it's full of mercy in His presence. And um, so I just want to invite you into that if you've never done it before. Um, we don't want to breeze by the moment. We want to give everyone a chance to just say yes to Jesus. Say yes to the best thing in your life. So would you just pray this with me? Just say, Jesus, I need you. I admit that Everything that I have done is not good enough, and I partner with you and your goodness. We're just going to declare that Jesus is the Savior, that He died and rose again for me so that I could have life. So I turn from my way and I walk toward you, God, and want to partner with your way. And uh, I declare you Lord of my life, and I trust you and I join your family gladly. Thank you for forgiving me and bringing me into your family. In Jesus' name, amen. If you just said yes to Jesus for the first time in that moment, I just want to celebrate it with you. It is literally the most um, wonderful thing that you could do in your life, and it literally just changes everything. The Word says that um, when you say yes to Jesus, literally on the inside, you become a new person. And if you said that and meant it and are looking toward Jesus for um, just everything that you need, you become a new creature. And so if you did say yes to Jesus, would you click the raise your hand button? Would you text Jesus to the number on the screen? Let us know that you did that because it's great that you said yes to Jesus, but also the next step is that we want you to walk with other people and know what the next steps are. We would love to help you get baptized. We would love to just walk with you and talk about what it looks like to live a life in Christ. So go ahead and let us know that you said yes to Jesus so that we can walk with you today. We're going to take a moment now to just talk about what it looks like to live a life of worship um, through our generosity. You know, worship is not just singing songs. It is the way that we live our lives. It's the way that we respond to God in every single part of our lives. And so one of the ways that we get to worship God is through our generosity. And I want to read this scripture from 2 Corinthians. It says, each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. You know, God has not called us to be a giver out of obligation or manipulation, but to give out of the abundance of what's in our heart and the love that we have for Jesus. And so we always say that we are blessed to be a blessing and we get to have the choice to get to be a blessing. God's not gonna rip things out of your hands. He's given us an opportunity here to be generous, to bless other people with the things that he's put in our hands. So let's continue to give cheerfully. You guys are such a generous, generous church. Thank you for just partnering with the heart of God in your generosity. And if you want to continue to do that or do it for the first time, the ways that you can do that are on the screen. There are tons of ways for you to connect with us, our app, our website, uh, text to give, um, just lots of different ways that way. But could I pray for us as we give today? Lord, you, um, you provide, you're the provider. And we want to keep the acknowledgement of you being the provider front and center um, so that when we are in a position to 
be generous with our lives, that we can do so cheerfully because we know that our Father is our provider and He is giving us everything that we need. So Lord, would you help our hearts be cheerful as your scripture said, as we give to you today, knowing that you, our provider, are, are providing for our every need. So we receive that and uh, we bless you with everything that we have in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, as we go today, I just want to call your attention to some stuff that is happening here in our East Coast locations. First of all, we have East Coast Live featuring Epic Ministries, and that is going to be such a fun event. It's for families with kids of all ages. It's free. It is fun. It is happening March 24th and 25th, and the March 24th is happening at our East Coast Merritt Island location. The 25th is happening at our East Coast Vieira location. You can get all the details online at myeastcoast.church under events or on the East Coast app. Let's check out this video to get a little sneak peek of what to expect. You're looking for a fun event for your whole family to enjoy together. Make plans to join us at East Coast Kids Live. We're building a life-giving church that lasts, and that looks like keeping you and your kids connected. We love families, and we love fun. So we're bringing those two things together at East Coast Kids Live as we host Epic Entertainment, for an event filled with fun, laughter, and biblical truth. Hope to see you and your family there. Let's go. East Coast Kids Live is going to be so much fun. We would love to see you and your family there. Last thing I want to tell you about is um, I'm calling all of the musicians and singers. East Coast Worship has room on the team for you. And so we are making it easier for you to get onto the team. We have auditions live happening in two locations next Sunday, March the 12th. There's going to be uh, one at our VR location and one in our Parkway location. They're both happening at the same time. You can go to either one. It's all one big team. So if you have been considering being part of the East Coast Worship family, it's time. It's time for you to get in there and audition and join the team. We'd love to have you. You can find out more about that. Let us know you're coming at East Coast, myeastcoast.church slash events. Let us know that you're coming. We will look forward to seeing you there. Um, and also, as always, if you have missed anything that I said or you want to catch up on anything that's happening around the East Coast, get the East Coast app. It is free in your app store. As we go, I would just want to bless you with the blessing from Numbers. It says, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. Walk in that peace this week. We'll see you again next Sunday.